Hey guys, Eric Crown over here from Nerdy Geek Talks for all your nerdy geeky needs. Here with episode 58 of Steel City Bots, and this is a special episode, not a normal one. We recorded a normal one yesterday. Today is a special episode because I am joined by Jeremy Levy. Hi. How How's are it going? You? Also, it's it's Levy. Levy. For the for the record, yeah, it is it is Levy. Levy. So you, oh, you, that's okay. Good to yeah, know. Yeah, you, you you heard it here first. Look at you. You got the exclusive. <laughs> the exclusive <laughs> on how your name is pronounced. You got the jump on everyone. Look at us go. And also, uh, Michael Blaine, aka Soundjack. Michael, how are you? I I am doing great. How are you doing, Eric? I'm doing pretty good. It's, it's been a good day. Good to hear. Alrighty, so for those who don't know, Jeremy, uh, what what is your role within the Transformers fandom? Well, uh, I, mean, I guess not fandom. You're official. Yeah, I'm the I'm 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 the real deal, I guess. <laughs> um, I play Bumblebee uh, on Transformers Cyberverse, and uh, a number of other characters as well, which I don't I'm not sure I can go into detail quite oh. yet. That. I was unaware of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's uh, cool. Yeah, which is also I had a, a very long session today, where I played a number of characters. Some of them are more vocally demanding than others, so if my voice is cracked out. I do apologize. So your session today was for Cyberverse. Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I was kind of wondering that. Wasn't going to ask, but I did, yeah, I was kind of curious if that's what you were doing. Yeah. Right, awesome. Well. Uh, the way we are going to do this is we have four categories of questions. Uh, Michael and I will alternate on them. And first is per personal, then we have professional questions, then we have Cyberverse slash Transformers in general questions, and then just some other fun ones. So Sweet. All right. Sounds so great. I will start us off with the personal questions. So first okay. off, can you just tell us a bit about yourself and who who is Jeremy... Levy. Oh, it's Levy. It's still Levy. Levy. I'm Hasn't sorry. changed, Eric. I'm sorry. Hasn't I almost changed. said Levi. <laughs> I was like, that's uh, not it. <laughs> Levy. <laughs> I would Levi, get it by the end. Levi would have been good because I feel like then I'd have some money coming to me somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, uh, Jeremy Levy. Um, I, uh, I was born, I, I'm now excited to say this, I was born on a Springs Day, in, uh, May 7th, 1981. Um, yeah, you can do the math. That's fine. Um, <laughs> I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I grew up in South Jersey, went to college in upstate New York, and I've been back in the city for quite some time now. Uh, I went to college, actually started out in college, believe it or not, as a, um, so weird to say now, uh, as a, as a musical theater major. So I thought I was going to be a singer on Broadway. I was way off. Um, <laughs> not not quite where you envisioned yourself. Uh, yeah, which is which is totally fine because I have friends who, who you know, are in musicals on Broadway, and I got to tell you that seems way harder. <laughs> like I don't think they can show up to work in a baseball hat and sweatpants. I don't think that's how that works. I do like sweatpants. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah. I mean, sweatpants are super comfy. It's actually, it's in my contract. It's in my rider that I have to be allowed to wear sweatpants. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's not true at all. Um, yeah, so I went to college uh, for musical theater. Uh, soon figured out that musical theater wasn't really my thing, so I switched to straight acting. Okay. Uh, graduated with a degree in acting. Um... I did a uh, a short stint as a game show host in Atlantic City. Um, Ooh. Yes, I actually. This is a fun factoid, um, not not to divide uh, the audience, and and uh, this is not something I'm particularly proud of. But I did host a giveaway with Donald Trump once. That is actually quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Um, yeah. Donald Trump personally hands you one million dollars. And I was the host of the event. <laughs> it was. Uh, this is a very long time ago. This is like before The Apprentice, so no one even like really knew. I didn't even know like, you know, 
if he was going to talk when I hand him the microphone. Now I know. Now I'm well aware that he's going to talk <laughs> and <on> the microphone. <laughs> um, I didn't know. Uh, yeah, so I did that for a bit, and then I moved to New York, and uh, I've been a full-time actor, writer, producer, voice actor ever since. Nice. Yeah. So what was it that got your interest into acting and theater in general? Like, what made you want to do that? Um, I don't know. I think I would just... Uh, I, I think I just needed the attention probably when I was a kid. Um, I, uh, that was, I mean, that was mostly a joke. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I, was, I was always kind of attracted to it, even um, when I was like, you know, we'd be in the second grade and we, and we would all take turns reading from a book and everyone just sort of read and then I would put on these weird voices uh, while we were reading Peter Rabbit. Um, and I just sort of enjoyed the the play acting of it and then started doing theater in elementary school and summer camp. And, um, yeah, I just, I just kind of, I kind of took to it and I enjoyed it and people seemed to take to me and, uh, I just kind of kept going with it. And eventually like, you know, most people, when you tell your parents that you, know, you want to go to college for acting, they'll, they'll sit you down and try and talk you out of it. My parents were like, well, yeah, that's, yeah. That's why we won't pay for college otherwise. And I was like, oh, fair enough. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I had a, I had a bunch of support. Um, yeah, it was just, you know it was just kind of uh, sort of all I did. I wasn't much of an of an athlete. The nerds out there will appreciate that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that really that didn't leave uh, much of a recourse. I was gonna say you heard it here. He wasn't a jock. Oh no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, and then, did you say where you studied? What school it was? I don't. Uh, I I did not. I went to Ithaca College. Oh, oh. Ithaca! I think yeah. I know someone that goes there. Yeah, I, I remember looking into Ithaca when I went to college. Ithaca is gorgeous. I have seen the T-shirt. It's true. <laughs> it is. It is gorgeous. Um, yeah. Let me see. You answered several questions. Oh, uh, what shows did you do in college? Um, I did. Uh, I did some funny ones. I did a bunch of musicals. I did uh, Babes in Arms. I <laughs> did uh, um, Bat Boy. Do you guys know Bat Boy? Uh, no. No, I do not. Bat Boy is great. I highly recommend that you look it up. I'm not even getting any money for saying that. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> It is a it is a great show um, that was based on like the supermarket tabloid about the the Bat Boy in the in the oh, Inquirer. Bat Boy. Yeah. I misheard what you say. You were saying yes, yes, I do know a Bat Boy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was yeah. It was a great show. I played uh, I played Rick, the not nice boyfriend, and uh, and Lorraine. So. Uh, I played yes, so I played a like a, a douchey dude and a woman, which sort of set me up for the the plethora of characters I would play later on in life. I was gonna say quite the combination there. <laughs> yeah, they were uh, yeah they're 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 pretty separate. Um, <laughs> what else did I do? Um, remember, I I wrote a bunch of my own plays uh, in college, um, and we produced them, directed them. Uh, I was in them as well. Uh, I always kind of much preferred that. I liked uh, doing my own thing, sort of seizing my own destiny, because why not? You know, they gave us the tools to do it. The school was like, hey, if you want a space, it's free. You can do a show. So uh, I availed myself of it, and a bunch of my friends did too. Hmm. Uh, yeah. That's quite nice. Mm hmm. All right, cool. Uh,. Michael, do you want to move to professional questions? Yeah, let's let's move to that. Uh, though the first question was going to was something you actually answered for us. Um, what was your first gig outside college? Um, <laughs> the, so, um, I guess is is there any more you'd like to mention about your gig in Atlantic City? Um, 
I yeah. It was um. <laughs> It was totally weird. <laughs> it was just, it was a, it was a very weird uh, time in my life. Um, Cause I, I never knew what I was going to do from like one day to the next. I would just sort of, I'd show up and there would be like this big fake tree with like dollar bills, fake dollar bills for leaves and different colored acorns. And I'd be like, what, what is, what is this? And they'd be like, Oh, you know, we're doing the money tree giveaway. We're going to call up winners and they're going to take acorns off the tree. And if uh, they pull a blue acorn, they win this amount. And a uh, red acorn, they win this amount. And I'd just be like, okay, fine, whatever. Sure. <laughs> sure. That sounds sure. Fair. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was super surreal. I, um, I don't love Atlantic City. I actually, I wrote uh, a screenplay about my experiences there. Um, about like a broken down game show host in Atlantic City uh, who gets an offer to fix a million dollar giveaway. Um, yeah, yeah, it's sort of uh, Office Space meets Ocean's Eleven. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. sounds, that sounds quite interesting. Yeah, pretty good. That I like sounds, it. Oh yeah. Um, uh, but speaking of your screenplays, um, one of the first things I found when looking information up about you uh was the gift of magioli <laughs> oh man <laughs> <laughs> that is really funny yeah I, <laughs> and you and uh i i like i was just trying to find you uh somewhere on the internet and i eventually i did find you on imdb and that was like one of the biggest credits that was listed on there yeah uh, yeah since you were writer the writer the producer and the director of that um, so how about you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, oh man, that's funny. Um, I was, uh, I was sitting in a diner one day with my buddy, Matt O'Dowd, and, um, we were a little hungover and we weren't really, we weren't like, we were barely talking to each other. We were just sort of like drinking our coffee and eating our eggs. And it was uh, I think it was like the beginning of November and they just started playing Christmas music. Like at the beginning of November or something crazy. Like something completely outlandish. And I just looked up at him and I was like, I want to I wanna make a, like a Christmas movie. And he stared at me and he was like, why? I was like, no, no, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. I want to make a Christmas movie but just like a really messed up Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to, I want to, I want a story that follows all of the beats of a Christmas movie. Um, but it's just wrong. And like our hero learns a lesson at the end, but like, does he? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we like we we started like riffing on all these ideas of like you know this like this elf who has to get like a like a carton of heroin to the North Pole in time and like all these like terrible like <laughs> <laughs> these these like awful 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 Christmas and we were just cracking ourselves up and we eventually came up with uh, yeah the idea of Maggioli and. Um, yeah, we just we shot it. I think like a couple of weeks later. I think the whole thing came together uh, in a couple of weeks, and we sh we shot the whole thing in in two days. Um, yeah, it was oh we were it was super run and gun, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it was yeah it was fun. So it really was you know like my friends and I will do stuff like that all the time where we'll just kind of um, come up with ideas and we'll we'll run and we'll shoot something or. Um, yeah, again, like sort of that same idea that I saw from college that why not, you know, especially in this business and in this art form, like, you know, people aren't always banging down your door with opportunities and sometimes you have to really fight for them and other times it's like, well, you know, screw you, I'll just, I'll just make my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I, I'll make, say, I'll I, really, I really like the explanation behind that, though. 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get that image of an elf running cocaine to the north. All <laughs> out of my head for a while. <laughs> yeah. You, you and me both. <laughs> Um, but uh, the, the Gift of Magilly was the one main film project that I was able to find. Um, but what other film projects uh, have you been involved in that um, you enjoyed being in? Um, let's see. Um, I was in. Um, I was in my 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 buddy's picture. It was this uh, movie called Amateurs? Um, sort of an ensemble piece about couples in New York. Um, these, uh, these group of people that are unlucky in love and uh, it's, they decide to sort of forego um, sort of normal civil romance and just have a sexual relationship with each other with sort of no rules attached. It's kind of like that, uh, the Seinfeld episode with, uh, with Jerry and Elaine when they're like, why can't we just have sex and, and we'll make rules and that kind of thing. It's like that, um, but an entire movie and then there's a car accident. So take from that what you will. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know. The car accident kind of comes out of nowhere, if we're being honest. But <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it, yeah. Um, yeah. So the... Yeah, I've done that. But the, the bulk of my um, professional like voiceover stuff have been like commercial stuff. So I would say. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about uh, the commercials for a bit because um, I'm certain most of the audience would probably be familiar with you from one of the commercials because you've done commercials for a Everyone. bunch of. Yeah. It's definitely from, from what I saw on your website, uh, everyone, but the most notable ones, uh, would definitely be the Intel Dell commercials, oh, yeah. uh, Xfinity, Kool Aid, Reebok, AT and T, Subway, a bit closer to Transformers with um, being Hasbro, other Hasbro properties, commercials for Creo and Nerf. Mm -hmm. But I think the one most people might recognize your voice from is from the Snickers commercials. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have to ask, who are you when you are hungry? Oh, um, <laughs> that is that is a very that is a very good question. Um, I would say uh, annoying six year old <laughs> <laughs> would probably be the most accurate. Great. Uh, <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm not sure. I'm not that when I'm when I'm not hungry. If we're being honest, so. But I'm hoping. It's just yeah, exaggerated whenever you're hungry. Yeah, that's probably that's probably the case. <laughs> yeah. I, have to admit, um, I was shocked whenever I saw that you do that though. With that, you do those commercials though, because those are so just iconic. Like everybody knows that. So it's just like, well, oh man. I don't. I don't do all of them. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry to burst your bubble, boys. How many have you uh, done? Well, it was just for the Snickers Bites ones. Oh, so just basically, that one? Okay, yeah. so we've at least seen one that you bites? were in, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Snickers oh. Bites ones I do. Because okay. they wanted, like, the, the sort of the, the iconic voice that you're talking about. Although I appreciate that you thought that was me. That was, that's, I, you know, that tickles my heart. Uh, but they wanted someone like that voice, but just who sounded, like, a little bit younger. Oh, so okay. I guess it, it was, like, a smaller, smaller product, smaller voice? Oh, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> I noticed that the voice is a little different when I ever listened to the one that was on your website versus the yeah. regular Snickers one. I like I noticed the voice was different, but listening to the range you had on all your other stuff, I thought it was reasonable that it could have been you. Well, it's, it's, it's nice of you. Let's just say it was. Let's just say it was me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're all they're all you. Yeah, oh, that was me. Not? I did them all. But... Also, did you do the entire voiceover for the Injustice Two trailer? Uh, I did. I did do that. I really liked that. Thank you. I just wanted to point that one out in particular because that one surprised me just in terms of how different it was. I really and I, I really like that game, so I was just like, "Oh man, he did that." Yeah, I uh, yeah that came that came together real like I think I auditioned for that like the morning I recorded it. I think like I got like a call to come <laughs> in an audition, 
And then I went home and they were like, no, 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 come back, come back, come back. You got, you got it. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, you guys are on a schedule. Or maybe you're <laughs> just that good. Probably. That's, that's yeah. probably. That's, <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's more than likely. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, speaking of um, the ads, uh, the, the different commercials you're involved with, um, I also noticed when going through stuff, a lot of them were definitely were along the um, very health food oriented, and I don't know. And Such I, I, and Snickers that, bites. Not, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I was like, well, really? You had like a lot of sub. Well, obviously not the Snickers bites, but like there was Subway about a sub. There was definitely a bunch of Subway commercials, a bunch of different eateries that were like eating green and eating healthy. Um, and I'm just curious, uh, when it comes to uh, gigs for commercials, do you, how much of it is for you pick and choose what you actually want to do and how much of it is I'm just going to audition and see what happens? Oh, that is, that is so sweet of you to think that I have an option. <laughs> uh, no, I, I mean, I go on probably, you know, 10 to 12 auditions a week. Um, and the job is, you know, the job is auditioning. Like that's, that is the actual job. Okay. Um, and then when you book something, that's just sort of the cherry on top. Um, but no, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I guess like there were some products or companies that I had a personal issue with that I wouldn't, that I wouldn't audition for. Um, but in general, no, I, uh, I just sort of, you know, I go out and beg for people to hire me. But uh, I do notice that, like, I will go through phases where I will book a bunch of one kind of thing at a time. And I don't know if that's just, like, what's in vogue at the time. But I did, like, for a while I was, like, cool older cousin. Um, and I did a lot of kid stuff. And uh, which is sort of in the vein of, like, you know, Bumblebee. Bumblebee is, like, you know, sort of younger, cool older cousin character who's not always that cool. But, um, and then I went through this phase where I was just like, like the chill, almost stoned, super, <laughs> super laid back guy. And I kept getting, like, I kept booking those all <laughs> in a row. And I was just like, all right, all right. Cool. <laughs> oh, okay, that's interesting. That's yeah. Funny. So it just... So I guess the commercials I saw were all just from like a phase, I guess. That, it that. could be. I mean, I like I would say, you know, when people ask me, I like I know I did a, like a lot of like kid stuff and toy stuff and and candy stuff and um I know I know I did like a bunch of that. Although, you know, not really so much anymore. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I guess I grew out of it. Do your I mean, commercials I mean, tend to lead into other things, or is it just like a one and done usually whenever you do them? Um, well, sort of. No, I mean, you know, work, like we say, work begets work. Like the more you work, the more you're going to work. So it actually gets easier. Like, you know, when I've been doing this full time for 10 years now, and... People are like, wow, how did, you know, how, how have you been doing this for 10 years? It's like, it's a pretty competitive industry. And it is, but it does, it kind of gets easier on some level, on some level, the longer you stay into it, only because people kind of know who you are. Um, so like commercial casting directors in New York kind of know who I am. Uh, a bunch of the ad agencies know who I am. A bunch of the producers know who I am. So they do kind of lead into things where, you'll do one commercial and then all of a sudden those producers will bring you back for another and another and another. Um, or, um, you know, the casting director for Cyberverse was someone I knew quite well, uh, having auditioned for her for years through like various commercials and stuff like that. So were they Hasbro related commercials necessarily? Cause just cause I know that you did the, the nerf and the Creo, like, do you think that the brand had anything to do with it or no, just since Hasbro owns them and owns transformer or, or was it totally separate? I, I think it was totally separate. Gotcha. Uh, I was just curious I, about I think that, that one in particular. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that was, there was really a connection there. I think it, that was just sort of, um, you know, I think it was just sort of coincidence. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, stepping away from um, the television and the ads bit, um, among among years, and you mentioned this before with uh, with your schooling, uh, you've you've t- you've written some original plays, and you and at least from what I can find, uh, you've produced three of them. Um, uh, those being an outstanding vintage, outstanding vintage. Sorry, mm-hmm. uh, twenty one days and showmance. Mm-hmm. Um, and you had performed in at least two of them. I couldn't find anything on cast on casting for twenty one days. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was not in that one. Okay, uh, but uh, I just wanted to ask how. Uh, I don't know if you want to like just focus on one of the specific shows, or you just want to talk about all of them in general. But like, how was it making and producing those shows in in uh, the city? Um, because uh, I think I think all were all these in the city, or am I mistaken in that? Uh, these were all in the city. Okay. Um, it's great. I mean, that's you know, uh, New York in a lot of ways is is um, kind of what I was talking about again in college, where especially theater, which is why I tend to gravitate more towards like producing theater uh, than film. Is just because um, there are so many opportunities for it. There's like. If you, which is which is good and bad, and I, and I will tell you why. Uh, to produce theater in New York is actually super accessible. I mean, we you know we live in in one of the theater hubs of of the world, and there are spaces everywhere. And because New York, because our spaces are so small in New York, um, anything could be a theater. Like I've I've seen black box shows and like under a staircase, and you're like, sure, this is a theater. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> awesome, great. Um, so it really, I mean, there there are tons of opportunities. Like if you wanted, if you want to produce your own play in New York City, it is like not that hard to do. That said, that is also sort of the problem, <laughs> because that's why eighty percent of the theater in New York City kind of sucks because <laughs> because it is kind of easy to do. I mean, like some people are just be like, um, you know, hey, that's a space. I have friends. Hear our words. Let's do a play. Uh, and I feel like sometimes that's why it kind of gets uh, a bad rap. But let's not, let's not, let's keep this positive. Um, but I'm still attracted to the idea that, like, yes, any anyone can sort of make their mark and tell their story in New York City. Um, so uh, I've done these plays. I'm still doing these plays. Um, actually, I'm adapting an outstanding vintage uh, into a short film as we speak. Oh. Um. And I, unless I find someone way better than me, which, you know, let's face it, probably, probably not. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be in it. Um, we're producing that as a short right now. Um, and I'm still uh, working on Showman, still developing it. Actually, just, I talked to a bunch of producers last week. Um, where I think we're going to give it another sort of bigger go in New York City, um, but I uh, yeah I love these I I love these stories in particular I, I mean especially Twenty One Days is um, I love that actually we talked about adapting that into a short film too um, yeah but these plays sort of keep coming back on me um, I don't know for those of you who don't know like an outstanding vintage um, it is based on uh, a relationship that I had a while back, um, and the crux of it. This is, you know, don't take it literally. But the crux of it is basically you have this couple, and this guy wanted to pursue his acting career, and this girl wanted to settle down and and have a bunch of kids, and they couldn't bring it together, so they split up. And then we fast forward a couple years, and she is a star on Broadway. And he is directing Bye Bye Birdie at a junior high school in the suburbs. So they kind of end up leading hmm. the life that the, that the other wanted to lead. Um, and then he comes to her show. They haven't seen each other for a number of years. She's engaged now. Uh, and he comes to her show and they sort of share a bottle of wine in her dressing room after the show. And take a trip down memory lane. And we kind of see where that takes us. Um, and it's it's a I think it's you know it's a great sweet little story it's it's really it's pretty short it's only like twenty twenty five minutes or so, um, 
but I, uh, yeah, it has a piece of my heart. And then um, Showman's, this is, this is a, I'll, I'll give him a plug too. It's a fun piece of trivia. Um, I, I'm, I'm not the most famous Levy in my family. Um, my younger brother is actually a reality TV personality. Um, who, I, I love your silence. You're like, go on. Yeah, I'm actually very curious about this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he was, <laughs> he, well, he was, on, he was on a show, I think like, oh, wow. It was a while ago. It was like 10 years ago now, but it was, it was called I Love New York 2 on VH1. Do you guys remember this at all? It was like a, an offshoot of, of, um, of Flavor of Love. You guys are, you're young. You don't remember this. I was going to say, I do not <laughs> know what that is. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's um, but yeah, he was on a reality TV show and, and he sort of, he dined out on this for, for a while. And yeah, I remember, I remember saying to him, I was like, wow, what's the, what's the weirdest thing about doing a reality TV show? And he said, the weirdest thing is you never know what's real and what isn't. He was like, it's like a 24 hour a day improv scene and it just never ends. And you like you never it like it really messes with your head. And I was like, wow, what a great place to set a love story. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So Showmance is about this couple that uh, that met on sort of a Big Brother esque show and they fell in love and everything was great. Uh, and then after the show, they're all they're super famous and they love each other and everything's happy. And then it's like a year later and they're not famous anymore and they start having some problems and kind of their true selves start to come out. Um, and then they decide it's probably best that they break up. And then as soon as they decide that, whoops, she gets pregnant. Um, so they kind of have to figure it out. So it's this whole idea of like, you know, the, the amount of our true selves that we bring to our relationships. Um, and uh, the idea of like what it's like to feel special in this world where everyone is is angling for likes <laughs> and views, uh -huh. um, and how how someone can feel special, you know, outside of all of that. That sounds really good. Well, thank you very much. Yes. I was I I didn't plan on talking about it that long. I just uh, I like <laughs> I just like it so much. Yeah, no, I, mean, I, I actually want to. Like yeah, that really has my interest now. Yes. <laughs> well, great. Yeah. Well, I'll let I'll let you guys know when we do another production. We we'll come on out to New York, and you'll see it. Sounds like a plan. Definitely. Yeah. I'd I'd really like to if I can. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, um. That was that was probably way longer than you guys planned on. I threw off your entire podcast now. This thing's gonna be three hours long. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's <laughs> fine. Hey, hey, we're here. As long as you're fine with it being that long. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, but uh, the next question I do want to ask. Um, so you, so those are the stage productions I've been able to find about you. Um, mm -hmm. They were all your original works. What other stage productions have you been involved in since you've been in New York? Um, let me see. I should just bring up my, my resume on my phone. <laughs> Right, I, I should have said. I just <laughs> hey, just pull up your resume. I got a couple questions that might that might the resume might be a good cheat sheet for. Um, I've you know I've done a bunch of uh, off Broadway, off off Broadway stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> nothing nothing like you know that I that particularly excites me that I would love to like talk about. A lot of it was just sort of you know um, bit part stuff or or smaller shows and. Nothing that I'm going to be quite as passionate about as as Showman's. Come see Showman's. I was going to say nothing. <laughs> nothing can be as awesome as Showman's. No. Yeah, I mean, like you know, it's like I said. I just I I tend to, you know, I like kind of like doing my own stuff. Yeah. 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 That's cool. That's nice. That's very. That is really nice. Uh, but um, so you have. As we discussed, you've done stage, you've done screen, and you've done voice acting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I pretty much I'm pretty sure you've answered the question already during this stuff. But just to clarify, which of those do you prefer? Um, that is a that's a toughie. Um, I mean, I I I really like 
each for different reasons. Um, but I will say that I'm I am really coming around more so to to voiceover, um, but specifically like animation, um, okay. because uh, you can be anything. You know, like you, I'm not, you know, I'm not getting cast as like, as an action hero in a movie (laughs) or (laughs) like, or a play, but like, you know, there's, there's, you get, there's no bigger charge than when you get to be like, you know, your childhood hero or like, say those, like those, those hero, those stock hero lines, um, Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that is that is steadily starting. I'm I've I've been bitten by by that bug. I think um, so. I'm gonna at this point in time. I'm like I'm gonna say like voiceover animation is is probably my favorite, which is which is good because that's why you guys know me. Plus sweatpants. <laughs> yeah, sweatpants. <laughs> Come on. Way to way to call it back. Yeah. Wait to call it back. I yeah, sweatpants. Attention. Sweatpants make it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's, that's 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 really cool. Um, so you mentioned uh, a couple of things regarding to this next question. Uh, you mentioned you're working on a film adaptation, the screen adaptation for Outstanding Vintage. You just mentioned you've done some more Cyberverse recording today, um, it sounds like. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, Are there any other projects you're currently working on or projects that you know you will be involved in that you would like to mention? Um, uh, Yes, I am. um, But I don't think I can mention them. Okay, so you'd like to, but you... Okay. Yeah. Completely Um, understandable. I am I am working on yeah I'm working on a bunch of other things uh, some other cartoon shows uh, but I don't think that I'm I can really say anything until you know until they come out okay hmm. but they're fun and I enjoy doing them okay and I get to sing oh, oh that's fun yeah, yeah. Ooh, okay I can't wait ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But um, the last question uh, I want to ask for this section of the interview. Mm -hmm. Uh, What uh, advice would you offer someone who wants to enter theater or voice acting? Ooh. You know, (laughs) I once, uh, when I was in high school, we went on a school trip to see a funny thing happened on the way to the forum, Mm -hmm. uh, which at the time was starring Nathan Lane. Oh, nice. And and we were able to like hang out after the show and, and talk to uh, a bunch of people who worked on the show. And uh, Nathan Lane walked out onto the stage, uh, probably not realizing we were there because he did like a double take and then realized he was caught. He was like, <laughs> oh, oh, crap. Oh, crap. It was, it was Nathan Lane. So it was more like, oh, crap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think I was like 14 or 15 at the time and I asked uh, Nathan Lane that question and I said you know any advice for a young hopeful and I'll never forget this this was, this really stuck with me he, he looked me dead in the eye and he said don't come to New York <laughs> <laughs> you clearly <laughs> listened <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all I said. Um, so I would not say that to young hopefuls. Um, I would say that um, acting and voiceover are in a very interesting place right now. Um, both things are becoming a, a less exclusive club. Because technology has sort of democratized it and the fact that there's so many avenues for distribution. Um, there's, there's so much out there. There's so much out. So the idea that like, 
you know, um, I, I need to be the lead on this ABC network show or I need to be, you know, a Hollywood superstar. Right now and, and in the future, it's going to be even more so. There are going to be tons of opportunities for everyone. Um, so don't, don't be scared off by the idea that, like, you know, it's, it's, it's hyper competitive and there's only room for so many people. There's only going to be more and more content getting made all the time. Ah, that's my phone. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hang on one second. <laughs> Look at that. So professional. I like, dude, that was during the inspirational part. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, so, yeah, so I would, I would say, like, don't, don't, be, don't be scared to throw your hat in the ring. Um, learn as much as you can. Um, and don't be afraid to make your own stuff by, by that same token. I mean, anyone, anyone can learn how to use a camera. Anyone can get a space. Anyone can buy a microphone. Um, <clears throat> it's, um, there's room enough for everybody. So... Yes, it's competitive, um, but don't be scared off by that, and don't be afraid to blaze your own path. I think be that's my the best advice. I, advice I've heard for that in terms of people talking about that kind of stuff. Most people don't say the "do your own stuff." Yeah, yeah, that I've heard of. So I, I like that. I mean, you know, it's and on some level, the cream rises to the top. So, like, if your stuff's good. <laughs> Like it'll, it'll, people will take notice. Mm -hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. if it isn't, well, you know, there's always insurance. I hear real estate's also pretty lucrative. True, mm -hmm. true. Yeah. All right. Well, now we can move on to what probably 90% of the people are listening for. But mm -hmm. I, I loved all that. But now Thanks, we man. are into the Cyberverse and Transformers category of questions. Feel so. feel free to edit liberally. By the way, it's fine. Uh, no, just, I, th I thought it was all very interesting. I really you liked can just all that. you can just keep my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> First I, question: What is your I birthday named presents. that yeah. Transformers stuff? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, you can keep that. Everything else, everything else, you can cut. <laughs> fair fair okay um okay so the first question we have for you is how were how okay i'll say how familiar were you with transformers before working on cyberverse uh so the answer to that is not very but there's a caveat to that um i had um, yeah, for whatever reason, like Transformers just wasn't on my radar growing up. Um, but I fancy myself something of a nerd. I mean, I love comic books. I love comic book lore. I love animation. I love all sci-fi stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm acquainted with, with the world and the idea. And I knew that when I booked this... I hate like you know when when someone books an iconic character and someone asks them you're like so you know did you did you do your research did you read the book did you read the comic book did you read whatever and their response is like no you know I just I just wanted to stick with the source material, um, so I knew that taking on this this iconic character was a responsibility. I knew I knew that I know that people love this character. I know this mythology means so much to so many people. Um, and I felt responsible for for doing them justice. So after I booked the job, I sat down on my couch hours every day and I took Transformers 101. I sifted through 30 years of content, which I assure you is no easy goddamn task. <laughs> As someone who's a fan of all of that, I can totally back you up on that. It's, yeah, it's a lot. It's great. It's I enjoyed it, but it's it's a lot, especially when there's no like defined continuity. So you're not just like learning one continuity. You're just like you know, it's like learning twelve versions of the Bible. You yeah, know? Well, yeah. Welcome like... to the multiverse. <laughs> yeah. 
Everything's um, canon. But I, you know, I sat on my couch for hours every day with a, with a, with paper and pen, and I took notes, and I watched. So I would usually watch like a couple episodes of every one of the cartoons just to get a sense of it. And then I'd usually like research like like the big standout episodes and then I'd watch those. And then I'd watch like a lot of YouTube explainer videos on like kind of like what happened in the in the rest of the <laughs> of the season. Um, but yeah, I spent a lot of time on YouTube, a lot of time on Wikipedia, a lot of time watching cartoons. Um, so I have since, I would say, become very familiar <laughs> with trans. I still can't go toe to toe with you guys, but, um, you know, I can I can somewhat hold my own. Is there a particular version of Bumblebee or just a particular Transformer show that you you found you liked the most? Ooh, that is a good question. You don't have um, to. I'm just curious mm-hmm. if any if anything stood out to you in your your research over the multiple generations. Um, I mean, I think you know. The, I, I know this is like a total cop out, but I think like every iteration of Bumblebee really touched on an aspect of that character, you know, that, that really, that really sort of brought him out. Um, I, I, I liked prime because, you know, it was, it was sort of the, it was sort of the darker of them, um, which as an adult is sort of, you know, easier, it's an easier entry point. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, you know, I liked, I liked the, the whimsy of animated and I liked how it, it really subverted expectations because it wasn't as whimsical as you thought it was going to be. Um, and I like like the the sort of craziness of G1, you know, (laughs) (laughs) like really? Okay. Okay. All right. Sure. Yeah. Let's, let's do this. I'm in. Let's strap in. Um, yeah, I uh, I like those. Uh, not too into the movies. <laughs> That's I don't fair. know. That's fair. Yeah, completely. Are you uh, Are you excited for the Bumblebee movie though? I am very excited for the Bumblebee movie. I really enjoyed that trailer. I think, um, and I love that director's uh, other stuff. Um, oh, you've seen? Uh, is it Kubo and the? Yeah, Kubo and the Two Strings yep. and and Coraline and um, yeah. I mean, I I think I think they're really taking this, and I just I love, you know, I I love the simplicity of it. You know, like I remember like watching the Michael Bay movies. Sorry, Mr. Bay, but like, you know, I remember watching. I think it was Revenge of the Fallen in in theaters, and just like almost falling asleep just because it was like white noise because my brain couldn't latch on to what was happening. <laughs> it was just <laughs> like, you know, it was just loud noises and close cut images. And I was just like, and, and the new Bumblebee movie just seems, it seems simple and elegant. And even like, even his design is just sort of like simple and elegant. Um, and it feels, you know, it feels, all, it feels a lot like a Spielberg movie. Mm-hmm. I'm stoked. Cool, cool. Um, next thing I have is how did you get the role of Bumblebee in Cyberverse? Um, I slept my way to the top, basically. That was, that was a joke. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, oh, no, no, that sounds about right. No. (laughs) 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 Laugh, boys. Laugh. I, um... Uh, so I met like you guys are just like fair enough. Um, <laughs> it works. I so I, I I heard about it through multiple. So I told you I, I knew Jen Sukup, who's the casting director. Okay. Um, and Jen reached out to me, and my agent reached out to me. Um, but weirdly enough, at the time, it was not for Cyberverse. Uh, it was for Rescue Bots Academy, so they had me uh, read for a bunch of roles on Rescue Bots Academy, uh, including Bumblebee. So, spoil- I mean, you know, you saw the poster. Bumblebee is going to be in a Rescue Bots Academy. I don't think that's really a spoiler. No. Um, so, yeah. So, I so I was actually auditioning for Rescue Bots, um, 
and then I had had like a couple auditions, and they kept calling me back. And then Jen was like, you know, like I'm sorry. Um, they just for for you and Optimus and a number of the other characters. Excuse me. They um, you know, they just want to be really sure because you know there's there's this other Transformer show that they're doing, and they want to use the same actor. So like they just want to be dead set that they have the right person. I was like, oh, there's oh there's an, there's there's another Transformer show. She's like, yeah, yeah, they're gonna they're, they're gonna do a Transformer show. I was like, oh wow, cool, awesome, that's great. Um, so they brought me back um a bunch of times to read for it, and every like every time I read, I got sort of a new bit of information. Um, so I read there. I think the first time there weren't any scripts actually, so they just had us read um scripts from Rescue Bots Academy. Um, and then they had some scripts from Cyberverse, and we read some of those. And then uh, they were like, all right, so here's the thing. So they're doing this thing where Bumblebee is not going to be able to talk sometimes, like in various timelines. It's We're not really sure. Um, <laughs> but they also they also need someone who can, like, do a bunch of impressions. And I was like... Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not really, I'm not really an impressionist. She was like, ah, you're going to be fine. You're going to be great. So they sent me like a bunch of those like Bumblebee radio lines. And another time I had to go in and just rattle off like a ton of different characters. Um, and then they seemed satisfied. Uh, and then eventually after like a bunch, uh, I finally got the call. They were like, you're in, dude. You got it. That's awesome. Nice. So, so, so I just want to make sure I understand one thing. So yeah. does that mean you are going to be the voice of Bumblebee for Rescue Bots Academy? Yes. Okay. Cool. And then, so then also the Optimus Prime would also be the Optimus for Rescue Bots Academy from Cyberverse. I, I honestly don't, I, my assumption is yes. Okay. Um, but I don't, I don't know for sure. Okay. Gotcha. My assumption is, yeah. I mean, my if you know they're using me, I'm assuming they would use Jake. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. Um, and so you said that they brought you in to audition for Rescue Bots, and then whenever they brought you in to audition for Cyberverse, were there any other characters they had you audition for for Cyberverse specifically, or did they go once they went from Rescue Bots to Cyberverse, did they just go straight to Bumblebee for you? Uh, no. By the time I got to Cyberverse, I was, they were only looking at me for Bumblebee. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Cool. I was just curious about that. Um, yeah. And then if you weren't Bumblebee on Cyberverse, who, which character would you be? Slash, who would you want to be? And you can't pick any of the other characters apparently <clears throat> you are that we don't know about. Because you said that, so. Pick so, someone that you definitely are not. Um. Wow. So, so, yeah, okay. Um, uh, Hot Rod, I love Hot Rod. Hot Rod's great. Um, especially, yeah, Hot Rod gets some, some really great lines uh, later down the pike. Um, let's see. I like Blur making fun of Hot Rod's uh, Hot Hot Shot, calls him Hot Shot. Hot Shot, Hot Dog, <laughs> same thing. Yeah. Um, I don't, I think, you know... I I I I also play a bunch of the char I enjoy a bunch of the characters I play. So I don't like I I don't think this is too spoilery because I won't tell you who, but I will say that I at some point play seven characters on the show. Oh. Ooh. Se so seven including Bumblebee. Correct. Or, okay. Just want to make sure it wasn't in addition to. Um so but cool. one of them is not Hot Rod as you well know. Yeah, I was gonna say. I'm pretty sure of that one. Um, but there, there are there are just a ton of a ton of great characters on the show, um, and a lot of times, you know, we get we get first crack at auditioning for them, um, and then if you know none of us are really right, then they then they go to a larger casting. So we you know we get the opportunity to to read for a lot of these characters, and I've read for a lot of super fun characters i've i've had a blast even even like when they're like jeremy we love you but like you're not right for this i was like i don't care i had fun <laughs> 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 i 
That was awesome. Yeah. That was great. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, so <clears throat> the other question I have for you is um, about the recording specifically. Um, how does that work? Like, are you by yourself when you're recording, or are you with the other actors? We are by ourselves. Gotcha. So you don't get to, like, play off of, like, whoever Windblade is whenever you're recording. Like, you're just recording your lines and reading what she's saying in response to you? Correct. Um, we, I mean, like, occasionally if someone has had their session before you, you know, they, they can give you their lines to react to. Um, but a lot of times, especially um, in the earlier episodes... You know, Bumblebee had the most lines. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> someone's a little proud. Yeah. Uh, so so I would usually go in first. So I didn't always like have people to to play off of. <clears throat> um, but yeah, sometimes like sometimes that's that's an option if you're recording at just the right time. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you adjust to that? Like, do you read? <clears throat> their voices in your head like to the lines that you're going you know you know what i mean like do you just imagine how they would say it or are you just reading and imagining how your character is going to react to what's being said like just i'm just curious about the the mindset you have to it because i feel like that's pretty different to be recording stuff that you are t- interacting and talking with other characters but you aren't actually interacting and talking with those people i mean it, yes you're right but the thing about voice acting is you get really adept at using your imagination because, you know, when you're doing a play or, like, when you're shooting a movie, you are on set and you're in costume and there are props. And it's like, it's, you know, you can sort of give your imagination a break because all these things sort of take up the slack and it's kind of easier to delude yourself that you are, you know, this person at this moment in time. Mm-hmm. And voiceover is like, you have none of that. <laughs> like, you know, it is you in a room. So while, yes, it's it's totally, it's easier and it's preferable to have someone there that you can talk to and play off of, you're already, you know, your, your imagination is already on fire. You're already like, you know, it's like, it's like when you're a kid and you're, you know, by yourself in your backyard, which I was a lot because I didn't have a lot of friends. Kidding. Kidding. I was very popular. <laughs> But it's like, you know, like, you know, when you're in, you're in your backyard and you're just and you're just playing by yourself and you are surrounded by all these imaginary people and you're like playing out the story in your head. It's kind of like voice acting. It's kind of the same thing. It's just that, that you are sort of putting yourself in these imaginary circumstances when you have very little to work with. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it is it's a little bit harder, but you're already in that mode. So it's it's nothing we can't do. So basically, you're saying that not having friends as a child prepared you for this job. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it's all it's all led to this. See that, guys? I didn't want to come to your stupid party, anyways. A <laughs> 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 bumblebee, man. <laughs> come full circle. <laughs> uh, that's great. Um. Mm-hmm. Do you watch the show now that it since it started airing? I think there's eight episodes out at least in the U.S. so far. Have you I watched think, it? I think, I think uh, we're only at seven. I think, yeah, we're only at seven. Okay, right now. seven. It said ten in Canada, so I've seen ten. But yeah, you know. let's all take a trip to Canada. I want to see those. Yeah, <laughs> um, until November apparently. Let's do it. Um, I do watch them. In fact, I think most of those views are me. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, if um, I was Bumblebee, I'd want to see and hear myself over and over. No, it's great. No, I, I annoy all of my friends. Whenever someone comes over, I'm like, did you did did you did you see the new episode of Cyberverse? And they're like, yeah, man, I, I saw it on YouTube. I was like, you, you want you you want you want to watch it again? And they're like, no, I I mean not really. And I was like, cool, cool, let's watch it again. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so. So still, still no friends. In case you're wondering. Okay, okay. <laughs> but at least you're Bumblebee. That's yeah. true. At least I have that to point to. <laughs> yeah. And so the question that's next was honestly written before 
we had heard your your normal voice because now it's kind of funny because honestly you, you it's it sounds like most of the time you just are using your normal voice as bumblebee i mean still acting obviously but yeah it's pretty it's relatively close so it sounds like we're talking to bumblebee but um the question is how much of yourself did you put into bumblebee um I would I would say like uh, I mean the, the characterization or or just the voice itself. I mean like like the, the voice is mine. He's just a little you know he's he's a little more youthful. He's a little younger. He's like he's a little brighter. So when I first started recording and I started talking to like the head writer and we started talking about the character a little bit, um, he said the thing about Bumblebee is he's always positive. He's just, he's always like looking for the best. Like even when things are tough, like he's always just trying to like, you know, he's, he's always got this sort of kind of youthful optimism about him. Um, so I bring that into a lot of it, even like when he's sort of like joking around and being a jerk and being the sort of annoying younger brother character, like tugging at, you know, tugging at Grimlock shirt sleeve. Um, he just sort of has this youthful optimism, you know. So he's like, he's he's a little bit brighter. He's just he's he's more up here. Bumblebee kind of lives right here. Uh huh. I gotcha. Um, but that said, you know, when shit goes down, like Bumblebee can can throw down also, which is why I mean that's, I like I love, I I love how much I get to do with the character because I, you know, I get to be sort of the snarky sitcom guy and I get to, you know, do a bunch of the impressions. And then like he, he gets some real, I get some real moments where like, I really get to act. I mean, that, that scene in Megatron is in my hero um, was one of my most good favorite things to do. Cause I, you know, that's, it's not me like being a kid's cartoon character. I mean, like I, that was, he really gets to explore the depths of his soul and he's and the whole yet one of the other things that was explained to me uh when we first started recording was this show is about bumblebee's journey so you know when he starts out as as this amnesiac who's like you know uh as, yeah some people pointed out like he's he's sort of he's all over the place he's super childlike he doesn't know what's going on and the idea is how we get from that guy to this like courageous hero character mm -hmm. and the and a lot of the series is about that arc and it plots it super super well so you, you know i get i get to play all aspects of this which is which is great which is like super rewarding hmm. yeah i gotta say what you said about bumblebee having the positivity like all the time the Megatron is my hero. The fin the the finishing you know scene yeah. in that episode with the talk 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 talk. Yeah, that was so well done. I loved that so much. Like even though yep. that is like that like because it, it goes from that darkness to just like totally lighthearted, and it wasn't like oh they just undermined what just happened. I thought it just made it even better. It just shows that he's just this positive character. I really liked that a lot. But also like in the. In the script, it says he is like his goal in that moment is is to make Windblade feel better. So the other thing about Bumblebee is like he's just so damned selfless. So like even though he just went through this traumatic thing, he looks over and he sees that that Windblade is super upset by this, and his first thought is to take care of her, is to make her laugh, is is to like get her out of that. Which is like, you know, as well. I, I mean, this character is just. He's so good. Like he's just so pure, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really it's really refreshing to play. Nice, and yeah, I th I just think it's amazing how well done it is. Uh, but who is your favorite character on the show other than Bumblebee? If you had to pick uh, your second, so like, <clears throat> you know, well, assuming you aren't your favorite, but you know, who, well, who this is, is your other favorite? Well, this is, I mean, this is tough because, like, I don't know if I can, like, you know, mention someone who who hasn't been announced or, or someone we haven't seen yet. So I guess the question would have to be who would be my favorite of 
who we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. Um, I I mean, Starscream's always great because he's just such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is, he is, he is just, um, he's just, it's a bit like every time you think he can't go any lower or every time you think you have him figured out. Um, yeah. And, and Billy Bob just, just plays him with, with like with such zest and such gusto. Like he has such a good time with him. Um, yeah. So I, I read, I Starscream is the character you love to hate. Um, let's see. I mean, I, lo- I love, I love Windblade. I think Windblade's great. I lo- like, I, I love her as, as the sort of straight man and the fact that she has to deal with all of these shenanigans. <laughs> um, but she, you know, she's so, she's so mission focused, but she's not inaccessible. Um, she's, she's not a fortress. I mean, like she, she's a tough chick, but like again in that moment in Megatron's my hero. I mean, like my ah, uh, my favorite. Sorry, I love Megatron's my hero. It may actually be my favorite episode. It's so um, good. That that moment where like Bumblebee like wants to see it against uh, Windblade's wishes, and she just says, "I'm sorry," and like the memory sort of envelops her as it comes at him. It's just like she, she's mm-hmm. like she's she's tough, but she's so. You know she's so caring uh, at the same time, and she and she gets even more vulnerable. Like she really, we really get to explore all aspects of that character too. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and then you've clearly already stated that you really, really like. I was going to say, what is your favorite episode from Cyberverse? But yeah, it's, <laughs> it seems pretty obvious which one it is so far. Megatron's is my hero. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, listen. There have been some great ones, and there will be some great ones. Like it, it sort of sucks that I have to sit on my hands here because, like, I wish you guys knew what was coming <laughs> down the pike. Because I, I will say this: you think you know, you don't know. And any anyone who thinks they know, anyone who thinks they have this show pegged, anyone who th- thinks they know where it's going, you have no idea, like at all. <laughs> That's really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets it gets so good. So so good. And it and it does things it does things that no other Transformer show has ever done. It goes places no other Transformer show has ever gone. It it like sort of approaches things from an angle no other Transformer show has ever done. Um it's uh it's great. So if you're watching the show and you think you you get it, um you don't. <laughs> Sweet. And that's great to hear that you think that it's very unique on its own, too, because so far I've loved how much influence from all the different shows it's had in terms of, like, there's been tons of Prime references, especially with the the psychic cortical patch. Is that what it's called? The thing that you the used cortical, to plug? Yeah. 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 They're like, that, that came from Prime. There's tons of generations, you know, uh, uh, generation one, you know, in terms of the character design and stuff yeah. and such. There's new characters. It kind of looks like Robots in Disguise, which is honestly the first show that the the new Robots in Disguise, since there's been two Robots in Disguise, um, mm-hmm. the one that follows up Prime, because that's the first show that made me like really like Bumblebee. In all fairness, mm-hmm. like I've I mm-hmm. liked past iterations of him, but I like really liked him in that show, and I feel like the animation isn't the same at all. But it kind of reminds me of that sometimes too. So there's just tons of elements from all these different shows and stuff like that. So I really like it so far. Well, I mean. The writers are fans. <laughs> oh yeah, especially from the the episodes that have aired in Canada that I've watched. Oh boy, are they fans? Yes. Like the right, like the writers are are fans. I mean, like they, they like and fans. Like I mean, they they're not like well, you know, they're all fans, but some of them. So what's so great about the writing team, at least the, the writers that I've met, because I actually I went out to L.A. and I went to Hasbro and I hung out with a bunch of these guys and they're Ooh. awesome. Um, you know, we've uh, we've become friends. We've hung, some of them have come to New York. I went to L.A. Uh, you know, we've hung out. Uh, these guys are all awesome. So and, and at least I haven't met all the writers, but the ones I have met, there's there's a nice mix because some of them are like just 
diehard fans and left to their own devices, they would write some like really crazy fan fiction, like some really, really <laughs> deep cut stuff <laughs> that, that everyone would be like, I don't, wh what? Get, huh? Um, and then uh, like May would, is more like you guys. I mean, she's in her like, I think mid 20s. Um, and her point of entry was Beast Wars. So she sort of represents that era, you guys, mm -hmm. like that era of Transformers fans. So she approaches it from that perspective. Uh, and then Randolph is the head writer, and he's, he's certainly a fan of Transformers, but not he, his knowledge isn't quite as encyclopedic as these guys, which is great because he ends up being sort of like the filtration system. Yeah, he can help balance it a bit. Yeah. Right. So all these guys like come at him with all these like deep cuts and crazy stories and characters and and uh, Randolph sits there and he listens and he goes, "Okay, well exp explain explain this to me. Explain to me why this is a good story." And then he sort of helps to shape it for kind of a wider audience because he is the wider audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it really is kind of a great system that that makes it something for everyone. Cool, cool. Uh, the next question I have is, do you intend to get a figure of Bumblebee for yourself? Dude, I have a bunch. Already? <laughs> nice. Nice. Sorry, I'm, I'm, staring, I'm staring at them now. I don't have that many. I have, well, I have, uh, I have two. But the only reason I have two is because I know the holidays are coming up and I'm going to be inundated. <laughs> 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 I just know everyone knows what to get me this year so I I'm holding off because I just know I'm going to show up and it's just going to be a sea of yellow <laughs> so. <laughs> so this is the first time that you're getting a toy of yourself right? It is true It is true. that's going to be a cool thing it's great it's great when I get text messages from my mom who is like Jay I just went to McDonald's and got a happy meal <laughs> 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 it's like thanks mom appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> that is great <laughs> thanks and then speaking of bumblebee merchandise have you signed any bumblebee merchandise yet uh i have not um before the show came out um yeah before the show came out there was like a uh, a friend of a friend who was just a big Transformers fan and was like sort of keeping up on with like what was going on with the show. Um, and unfortunately she uh, has cancer. So like someone reached out to me, like a friend of a friend and was like, hey, um, you know, this girl is a huge fan. Um, can, can you like, you know, can you get her something? And I was like, wow, you know, there isn't really any merchandise. So I, I printed out like, I went to CVS and printed out a bunch of um, like images from the internet on like cardstock and uh -huh. like made this and made this big collage um, and sort of like, uh, you know, signed something over to her. And I have been, um, it's amazing how, how, you know, all these kids are coming out of the, out of the woodwork. But I have been recording a lot of birthday messages for kids. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah. Wait, I think I can find... <laughs> I might be able to find one. I just sent this one. And I, like, I cut them together in Final Cut. Um, let me see. Let's see if you can hear this. I'm sure Benjamin won't mind. This is so... I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Let's see if this works. Hey there, Benjamin. This is your old pal, Bumblebee. Oh, well, sorry. We're going to get this. Okay. Do it. It'll happen. <laughs> yeah, much like... Is it just like your microphone much like, before we started the interview? I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is not going to be worth it now. Sorry, my bad. Well, at least we got to hear the beginning of this. Pal Bumblebee. Your Aunt Lauren told me you're a Transformers fan. So I thought I'd do a happy birthday. I also hear you're a pretty great soccer player. That's awesome. I'm a cube bot myself. I hope your day is filled with tons of cake and maybe a few dinosaurs. Well, I got to go teach some Decepticons a lesson. But I hope you have the best birthday ever. Oh, and one more thing. 
I was just out racing with Blaze and the rest of the Monster Machines. They say hi, too. Time to transform and roll out. Happy birthday, Benjamin. Bumble be out. That Apparently, Benjamin awesome. was very excited. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that so is great. sweet. That is so good. I love yeah, how you I'm, even take... reference the cube thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm taking orders. That is that is <laughs> awesome. Maybe we, we might have to order a thing for the show. Yeah. <laughs> I might I might could do, I might could do that. Oh, right, until I lost my place. Oh, that's fine. oh, oh, oh. The the last thing I have is would you be open open to voicing Bumblebee in a movie in the future? Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I figured I, you wouldn't say no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no way. I don't I do not want all of that money. <laughs> Screw, screw that. <laughs> um, no, of course. Yeah. I, would, I mean, I would love to. I, I mean, I told you, I, like, I have fallen in love with the character and um, I will do it as long as anyone will let me. Cool. Awesome. Also, do you, do you look forward to going to conventions in like 10 or 15 years whenever those kids are like of the age where they're starting to go to conventions? <laughs> Benjamin, <laughs> Benjamin. Are you still playing soccer? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that'll that'll uh, that'll be fun. I'm really I'm really excited. You know, I've been going to Comic Con in New York uh, as a as a civilian for quite some time, so it'd be nice to skip some lines, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's total. That that that's cool though. I really love that birthday message. That was awesome. That was yes. <laughs> Thanks, man. Apparently, Benjamin enjoyed it too. Is what is is what I'm meant to understand. It would be hard not to for a kid that for whatever age he is. That is <laughs> so cool. I think he's like four. Oh, oh man, that has got to be like the most amazing thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Soundjack, you want to start our final category? Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, so it's just just the other category, just some. Um, more miscellaneous questions. Um, first question. Uh, specific, I know I know you play Bumblebee, obviously, but are you personally an Autobot or a Decepticon? Oh, well, seeing as how they never cast me as a Decepticon, <laughs> um, I think I'm I'm more of an Autobot. So you just gave away that your seven characters are all Autobots. Uh. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe intentional misdirection. Yeah, yeah that's true. He could be lying was, to us. It was, it was <laughs> probably with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, that's not true. Well, I don't. Pl I don't play all heroes, but they're not. Some of the characters I play are not necessarily Decepticons, but they're not heroes. Ooh. 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 muddying the water is even more. I like huh. that. I like the sound of that. Ooh, yeah. I can't. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. That's cool. Cool. I told you. I told you. You don't know where this show's going. Oh yeah, no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, uh, you you mentioned you're you're into the comics and a bit of a nerd and whatnot. So, who's your favorite superhero? Batman. Batman, straight up. So overall, yeah. do you prefer DC or Marvel? I mean, you can totally love both, and I do too. But I'm just curious. Um, that is a toughie. Um, I do find myself pretty torn. Uh, I think in general, I lean towards Marvel, but I, uh, man, Batman's, Batman's my ride or die. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love me some Batman. Um, yeah, I have a, I have a setting again, no friends. Uh, I have a setting in... <laughs> Wait, I can do this. I can I, I can do some of this right now. Wait, hang on. Hang on. I don't know what's happening. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, yes, you do. You ready? Computer, call Batman. <laughs> can you hear it? Oh, is, it, you could, is it playing music? If you, 
If you could see my apartment right now, a bat signal just lighted up, just lit up on the wall. <laughs> no way. And then outside of that, I don't know if you can hear it. Wait, you'll hear. It. Do you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that is sweet. Yeah. I basically live in Gotham right now. Okay, computer, stop. <laughs> <laughs> just computer. One. Justice is served. Oh man, there's more. Voice is magnificent. I know. She just told me my voice is magnificent. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. Go uh, on, my bad. I just oh. a quick little thing off of that. Who's your favorite Batman villain? Only because his rogue gallery is just incredible. Who's your favorite uh, Batman villain? Yeah. Um. I mean, I want to say the Joker, and it's so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a solid choice. I mean, I, Joker is just such a such a great character. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm like, if I if I had to go deeper, um, I mean, S Scarecrow's pretty intense. He's kind of interesting. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe Scarecrow, or even like Mad Hatter's. Okay, that's interesting. I like yeah. Deathstroke, although he's not yeah. he's not exactly a just a Batman villain, but that's true. That's reasonable. Well, he yeah, I mean he's sort of he's sort of a he's Batman's physical match in a lot of ways. Oh yeah, he is like the anti Batman, but then also sometimes he's a good guy and he's just a mercenary. So sometimes he's just in the middle. That's he's, true. He's pretty cool. That's yeah. true. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give it to you. Cool. Right then. What's your favorite movie? Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so I have a fear of commitment. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I get really. This is this is probably going to derail the rest of your questions. I get I get kind of skittish around favorite uh, questions just because I'm just like, but there are so many. <laughs> there. Um, I. So, a movie that speaks a lot to me, uh, which probably many girls can tell you because I usually make them watch it. Uh, you know, it's not Gone with the Wind and it's not Goodfellas, but uh, High Fidelity uh, with John Cusack is uh, a movie that I could watch a million times. Um, I think it really it sort of speaks to me a lot about, like, um, kind of just being a guy and, and learning, you know, learning how to grow up and, and uh, assume yourself as, as a human being. Um, so I, I don't know. I really, I, I, I enjoy it. It's one of those movies that I could just put in like every single day um, and watch. So there's that. Yeah. Cool. Um, I, yeah, you, you, yeah, we, we do. There's a couple of, uh, Favorite questions here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, tread lightly, boys. I oh, wait. The, the the other favorite that I need to know though is what is your favorite color? Oh, uh, I like blue. Blue. Okay. okay. Yeah. Blue's not blue's not a bad answer. Purple's the correct <laughs> answer, but <I> <laughs> that's fair. I was wondering if that's yellow fair. would be your pick because of Bumblebee. Um, <laughs> it is. It is now. <laughs> what is Bumblebee's favorite color? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he has a choice. Yeah, no, I don't think he does. Um, no, I, I will ask one more favorite. Um, yeah. Favorite play. Oh. I know you're afraid of commitment, but very least one that would be in your a solid top three. That's how I'll phrase it. Um... Yes. Let me think about this for a second. <laughs> and it can't be once you've written. Uh, no. Um, so I'm going to get like super hoity-toity right now. Okay. Uh, there is a Chekhov play called Platonov uh, in some oh. translations. Um, I would say that is probably my favorite. I saw a crazy good production of it uh in london yeah that's right. Ooh, oh wow yeah that's right i'm quite the traveler um 
Uh, and it really kind of it left an impression on me. It was it was unlike any production I'd ever seen because the stage was like as deep as I, I want to say a football field. Like it seemed like that stage went back forever, and they used all of it. Like they they almost made sort of an actual farm, and they would have people like saying their lines from like you know five hundred feet away, making their way through actual what seemed like an actual farm. Um, it was pretty fantastic, and the and the subject matter. I mean, you know, Chekhov's okay, I guess, if you're into <laughs> if you're into that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go check it out. It's good, yeah. and you can and you can do a production of it royalty free. Oh yeah, yeah, you would. You mm-hmm. would. Cool. Um, so move, so we do have other questions besides favorite questions. So okay, okay. Um. This one's going to be a little weird and specific uh, <laughs> because right. when I was look, trying to find you, um, I I encountered another Jeremy uh, that... Levy. Levy. Uh-huh. Levy. You got it. it wasn't you me that messed it up this time. <laughs> because I, I was thinking Levi and Levy and I was getting it backwards in my head. I know I'm, I knew it was going to come out wrong. But anyway, Maybe another, this Jeremy Levy just this Jeremy is this Jeremy, Jeremy Levy. Levy is actually Jeremy Jeremy. Levy. You know, it's quite possible. Who knows? Anywho, uh, I did find this uh, other Jeremy Levy, um, who was an actor, um, who is who has uh, is now currently a physics professor at the University of Pittsburgh. And now I'm just wondering if you happen to know. <laughs> so I don't know him personally, but I will. I will. I will tell you this. A while back, um, some very industrious Jeremy Levy decided to start the Jeremy Levy Facebook group and made it his, <laughs> made it his mission to find every Jeremy Levy and or Levy um, in the entirety of the world. <laughs> and, uh, and I got to tell you, he, he, got, he got a bunch of us. <laughs> um, and we all sort of fight over our our corners of the internet. For example, I people make fun of me because my email is at Hotmail, but I got Jeremy Levy at Hotmail. That's mine. I snagged <laughs> that from the other <laughs> from, from the other Jeremy Levy's, and I'm not letting that go. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so when I first like started, you know, acting, and and you know, you're like, oh, they, you got to buy a website. I was like, all right. So I go. And this is still there. You can you can check this. This is this is fantastic, quote unquote. Um, I went to JeremyLevy.com to see if like anyone had taken it. And if you go to JeremyLevy.com, you will see a completely white page. And in the upper left hand corner, away. in <laughs> it says "Go away." <laughs> 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 And it's been like that for like 10 years. <laughs> You're not kidding. I literally typed it in. He said that. And I was just like, okay, JeremyLevy.com. And it, it, I was like, oh, it didn't load. But no, the top, right co- top left corner, go away. So <laughs> I, went, I, I went to that Facebook group. I went to the group. I said, all right, which one of you assholes did this? <laughs> Did you find out who it was? Did you get a response? No one. Yeah, no, no one, no one, no one copped to it. Oh, um, man. So I don't, I don't know that Jeremy Levy, but I am acquainted with several Jeremy Levies and/or Levies. <laughs> Some of them apparently are assholes. Oof, that's unfortunate. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the one did that. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. That's true. Uh but uh, speaking of uh, claiming names in corners of the internet, uh, what's the basis for your YouTube channel's name or um, web, oh. web address name, which oh. is Kid, Z- Kid Xavier nine six three? Wow, you did. You went. You went deep. You totally went deep. Um, <laughs> I can explain this to you, but I, I don't know that it's going to be a satisfactory answer, but I, I, I will try. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, my sophomore year of college, uh, I was taking theater history, and I was with uh, a bunch of friends of mine. Um, I might, I'll call her out. I might actually, I might call her out. Um, 
her name is Catherine Reitman. She's a very successful uh, actress. She has her own TV show in Canada right now called Working Moms. Um, she's uh, she's Ivan Reitman's daughter, Jason Reitman's uh, sister. But you know, she's she's very successful in her own right. Um, and we, she was a good friend. She lived in my dorm, and we were studying for theater history, and we were pulling an all-nighter at Wegmans, <laughs> and we we made these flashcards, and we were like quizzing each other on these on these various things, and we were so cracked out at that point. It was at, like it was like four o'clock in the morning, maybe later. Our test was coming up. Uh, we had a hundred cups of coffee, and I quizzed her on something i forget i mean like that's goes to show you how much i learned in theater history but i remember like the the answer to the question was thomas kidd i knew that was because i was staring at the answer that was the question so i asked her the question and cat was like oh 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 uh oh god i know this i know this i know this i know this uh oh uh, uh, um uh, uh kid 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 uh kid uh kid uh, xavier kid xavier kid xavier <laughs> That she just said Kid Xavier so confidently. <laughs> and it was so it was so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how you get from Thomas Kidd to Kid Xavier. But maybe maybe it's because I was equally as cracked out, but I thought that was the funniest thing I'd ever heard my entire life. And that that night when I got back to my dorm, because you know. AOL Instant Messenger was a thing at the time. I immediately changed my screen name to Kid Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it a more is now. Answer than, than you, not that I think you thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. So that's, uh, in some regards, has been following around, following me around for, for half my life. <laughs> Basically, the reason I wanted to ask was because I was like, does it have to do with Professor Xavier? That was the, yeah. like, that was the only thing I could think of. It really doesn't, and a lot of people think that it does, but no, <laughs> the real answer is way weirder. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Uh, all right. So, out of all of the people you met, um, you, you have told us some of the famous people if you've met, but who is the most famous person that you have known, met, or worked with? Oh, I feel like you uh, already said it. Yeah, I feel like he has, but I'm curious. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, well, that might not even be true. But I, I will, I'll give you one who might not be as famous, but is the best story. <laughs> okay, that I have. Fair, fair. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I, uh, some years ago, had the idea where I wanted to adapt. Uh, the room. Oh, no way. Uh, <laughs> to, uh, to, I wanted to make a musical out of it. Oh. And I had a friend who was an entertainment attorney and I had some people in the industry and, and it, it turns out it's not that hard to get in touch with him. Uh, but I eventually did. And I eventually was able to have a lengthy phone call with Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> No, I and cannot it, believe this. It is one of the most insane hours I have ever experienced in the entirety of my life. And he, so my 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 favorite part is, uh, Tommy's like, so so Jami, so Jami, so Jami, what what do you do? Okay, what what do you do, Jami? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, Tommy, I, I wear uh, many hats, but I, I'd say first and foremost, I'm an actor. And he goes, oh, you're an actor? You're an actor, Jami? Do me a monologue right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, are you, are, you, are you serious? And he's like, well, you say you're an actor, Jami. Do me a monologue right now. <laughs> and I was like, uh, Tommy, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I could just do you, Molly. He's like, you have five seconds to do a monologue or I'm hanging up. I'm like, Tommy, five, four. And I was like, okay, hang on. Whoa, 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 hang on, hang on a second, hang on. And I like 
reach i was in my bedroom and i reached onto like my bookshelf and just grabbed a random monologue book and flipped through a random monologue and just started reading <laughs> just like in the middle of a monologue and i got like through a paragraph and i just yeah okay cut 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 you're very good <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Thanks, Tommy. I appreciate it." So this, um, this happened. Wow. Oh, that's not even the craziest thing that happened in that conversation. But it's probably the most the the most safe for work part of that conversation. But um, yeah. So that that's that's my I think my favorite celebrity encounter. <laughs> but apparently, it it didn't go well enough for you to make a musical of the room. Oh no! You, um, I mean, one conversation with Tommy, you completely understand how the room got made. I mean, he's he's out of his goddamn mind. He wants what he wants. He won't take no for an answer, and he just like he just bullies people into like whatever he wants. And I guess if you have six million dollars and that attitude, you you too can make a movie. <laughs> Please, if you're listening, do not try to make the room. <laughs> don't. Please don't do that. <laughs> that isn't the moral of this story. Yeah. 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 Oh. God, that is... I, I, my mind is blown right now. I cannot even yes. believe. <laughs> I'm so glad I asked that question. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. From yeah. Donald Trump to tell me what's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got... I got stories, man. I got, got stories. You've got an exciting life. Yes. Uh, are you sure about that? Remember I just told you I have a bat signal in my apartment that I turn on with my voice? Hey, that's that's pretty cool. That's true. No, that that's is true. Exciting. That is true. I'm pretty, I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. I think that's uh, all the questions. Yeah. Um, do you want to do you want to plug anything, I guess? Um, I'm on this show called Transformers Cyberverse. That's pretty good. You should probably watch that. Uh, yeah, yeah, if, if yeah. you've never heard of it, I'm kind of curious <laughs> yeah. how you got here, but, you know. <laughs> I, I, I recommend it. I think it's good. That's fair, that's fair. And we can't know any of your other upcoming cartoons, because they're all super secret. Yeah, I can't. Um, yeah. But there's some fun stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. I am cool. very curious about that, though. Yes. About what other shows you're going to be in. Uh, I imagine I, I imagine the episodes are probably going to start dropping. I recorded them in April, so um, I don't know. You know, these things take a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Uh, well, I think that'll just about do it for this special interview episode. Um, as usual, if you, if you, uh, are new to the channel, you can subscribe basically anywhere you listen to podcasts, uh, Google play, iTunes, Apple podcasts, Stitcher, Podbean, all that good stuff. Or also YouTube. If you like to listen to podcasts on YouTube, I know that is starting to become a thing. Uh, nerdy geek talk. Just look for that, subscribe, and you'll get all of our different shows, including this one, which is Steel City Bots, and then plenty of other stuff. So, you know, definitely do that. Uh, and then we don't need to do personal social media since we just did that yesterday. So, yeah, I guess. I think that's about it for this episode. So, thank you so, so much, Jeremy. Ah, thank you guys. Thank you for having me. Clearly, I, I like talking about this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this has been totally awesome so you're our first interview too ah sweet well i hope i didn't ruin it for all the other interviews <laughs> no <laughs> i feel like this is a really good start yeah, i don't know how awesome. anyone's gonna top it wow you guys are great you guys are you guys are good interviewers my i tip find, my hat we just have to find someone that actually did get a musical of the room made and that will be the <laughs> way we top this interview yeah yeah god god <laughs> god help them yeah really <laughs> Oh, oh man <laughs> all right well that's about it so thanks for listening bye <laughs> <laughs>